Hey, brothers and sisters, God bless you all. So the Lord wants me to show you guys what it means to be holy and what the Holy Spirit has led me to and what scriptures I've been meaning to do this video for a little while and a sister brought it back up to me and she said that this helped her quite a bit. And I pray right now in Jesus' name that it helps all of the people listening to my voice right now understand more of what it means to be holy and what it means of, of God's holiness and, and that it helps each and every one of my subscribers, Lord, be blessed by this message and be edified through the power of the Holy Spirit within me in Jesus' name, amen. So, it's a call to be holy. This is 1 Peter 1. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So a lot of people think that they know what it means to be holy. And when the Lord showed me this through the Holy Spirit, it changed my perspective on everything. Because, you know, when it says, Be ye holy, for I am holy, it makes you think that you know, we're to be sinless. And, and there is that aspect to it, uh, to be pure from sin and to turn from your sin and, and not have any sin in your life at all. Um, but sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we get angry. Sometimes we get frustrated. Sometimes our mouth causes us to sin. And, you know, it could cause fear and in people and in the body of Christ, and then condemnation comes, and Satan comes with condemnation. Well, it says that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for those that walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. And so what it gives here, we're going to look at each of these words here as I'm led, but in Hebrews 12... It talks about follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You know, this is a call to holiness. So it says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And so this is pretty important if it says no man will see the Lord unless we follow peace with all men and holiness. So what is that word holiness? It, it's hagiosmos, hagiosmos, and and so it comes from um, the root of of hagios, hagios, and so we're going to look at these two words here. It says the process of making or becoming holy or set apart. So sanctification, you know, it says in in Romans eight that those whom he called. He also justified, and th those who he justified, he also sanctified, and those who he sanctified, he also will glorify. And I hope I'm not saying that, that scripture wrong, but the word itself, holy, you know, it says, without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And so what it means here is set apart. It means set apart and consecrated sanctification. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, this is, you know, it it's a constant thing that we have to do by rejecting this world. It says, pick up your cross and follow me daily. It says daily. A lot of people don't put that word in there daily. But we're to pick up our cross and follow Jesus Christ on a daily basis. And so that means constantly, every day, denying yourself to be set apart from this world. You know, if, if we're looking 
like the world and there's no way to tell us apart from from the world then are we trying to um let the holy spirit sanctify us or are we fighting that still small voice or that that feeling within you of like maybe i should you know uh, take a step back from netflix maybe i should take a step back from um you know, watching CNN for, no, I don't think you guys are watching CNN, but like, you know, watching uh, uh, TV and, and murder and, you know, um, horror movies. I don't think any of you are doing that. But if you are and you're wondering, why do I have anxiety? Why do I have fear? Why do I have anger and frustration and these different things and that's what you're filling your mind with you know the bible says our eyes are the lamp of the soul so what we're taking in our eyes and our ears you know maybe it's music you know you only listen to secular music and i'm not the lord uses secular music sometimes with me to give me a message but you know we have to control what's going into the to to our soul and into our spirit because the Holy Spirit is holy. That's, that's what the Holy Spirit is. Is and, and so this is what we're talking about here. Is it means set apart. So when you look at this, it says holy and sanctification. See, it says the process of advancing in holiness, the use of the believer being progressively transformed by the Lord into his likeness. And similarity of nature, being similar of, of the nature of the Lord. And so see, it's hagios is where it comes from, holy. So it says C, C number 40, and we're going to go there. But it says to, to be set apart is one of the definitions here, right? So it says without holiness, no man will see the Lord. And when you go to the root of the word holiness... It says to make holy, to consecrate, to sanctify. And then it says to set apart. It says to set apart as holy, right? And so it says hagios, and we still haven't looked at that. We will in a second, which means holy, is to regard as special and sacred. So, so holy and set apart set apart to sanctify it means to make holy and consecrate to sanctify to dedicate dedicate ourselves to be separate and set apart for the lord set apart from this world and so now going back to first peter so let's just go through the scripture and what we're going to focus on is the word be ye holy for i am holy and so it says Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. A lot of people don't know what that word sober means. Is Sober doesn't just mean to not drink or, you know, not be getting high on drugs and stuff like that. But it says to be calm. I am calm, vigilant, and circumspect. So to be, be calm, it says, but it says to not be intoxicated. But it says figuratively, so it's, that's literally what it is, is to not be drinking and getting, you know, too drunk. Um, because, you know, having a glass of wine isn't bad, but it's when you get drunk, that's where sin comes in. But it says free, see, figuratively, free from illusion. And by the way, I don't like drinking. <laughs> I don't I don't like the feeling and and I don't drink. Um, I have since I've had the Holy Spirit, you know, I've, I've had a uh, communion with the Lord with, with actual wine and stuff like that. But, um, where sin comes in is when you're getting drunk. Okay. I just want to say that. So it means figuratively free from illusion. So from the intoxicating influences of sin, so free from illusion and, and, and being, in a false reality of what's right or wrong. So free from illusion, free from the intoxicating influences of sin, like the impact of selfish passion, 
and greed. So it refers to presence of mind. So to be sober and unintoxicated refers to having presence of mind and clear judgment, enabling someone to be temperate and self-controlled. You know, temperate means to um, avoid avoid harshness, you know, to be moderate and mild, you know, relating, uh, hold on. Yeah, see, it, it's not the climate, um, a temperate climate. It's showing moderation or self-restraint. So to restrain yourself when you want something that you know is wrong, to say, Lord Jesus, please help me to have the the strength to deny myself right now of this today and and you know make it through that day if there's something you're struggling with and so it's saying show moderation or self-restraint so so restrained moderate controlled disciplined and you know having moderation and self-control self-control is one of the fruits of the holy spirit so it's something that the lord has to give you but to restrain yourself so that you can be temperate and self-controlled, which causes you to um, to have your wits, to have one's wits and faculties about them, which is the opposite of being irrational. So, so no extremes in your mind. You know, Satan will come and say, "Well, looks like you're going to hell." That is an extreme. You are not going to hell as long as you're you're walking this out by faith and you're you're being close to the Lord and turning from things daily that you know that you have to do and, and progressing in sanctification and being, you know, making an effort to be separate from this world and you're walking out your faith and you're not, um, you're not turning from, from your faith, then the Lord is with you. He's cleansing you. It says that if we confess our sins, then he is just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So right when we ask, you know, it says that, um, it says in Psalm, I think it's 104, it says that when we confess our sins, he casts our sins as far as the east is from the west. So it's saying that when he, when we ask for forgiveness for our sins, he forgets them. And so, don't let let Satan come in and condemn you. But so this is what it's saying is to be calm and collected in spirit and to be temperate, you know, to to avoid um, irrational irrationalities, you know, don't be irrational with your thinking, be sober and watch. And it says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, take your thoughts captive, tell Satan I'm not going to believe these thoughts. I'm not going to, that thought wasn't mine. You know, no, I'm not going to hate that person. No, I'm not going to have unforgiveness in my heart for those people in my past or that person that just wronged me on the street or anything like that. Take your thoughts captive. Be sober, avoiding, uh, you know, be calm and collected and in spirit and hope to the end. It says to hope to the end. And what this word is, is to expect and to hope for. But see, it says to trust. It says to trust to, till the end, to hope, actively waiting for God's fulfillment about the faith he has embirthed through the power of his love. So hope to the end, trust until the end. But that word to the end means it says to hope to the end, to trust completely and perfectly and without wavering, to trust to the end completely, um, without wavering. It's very important, you know, don't waver in what you know God's character is. See, it says having reached its end and complete and perfect uh, especially of the completeness of the, the Christian character, you know, it says uh, to consummate, it says a consummated goal, a mature consummated 
uh, mature and consummated from going through the necessary stages to reach the end goal developed into a consummating completion by fulfilling the necessary process and the spiritual journey. And so it says to hope and to the end, to trust him, no matter what your circumstances are, to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you. You know, the, the grace is his favor, his complete favor towards you, his grace and kindness. Um, see, it's favor disposed to and favorable towards, leaning towards to share the benefit. And it's it's grace, which is preeminently used of the Lord's favor, freely extended to give himself away to people because he's always leaning towards them. He's always wanting to be close to you. So that's why Satan, he puts thoughts in your mind. He puts sin in front of you. He tempts you so that when you do sin or when you do, uh, you know, stumble in your mind with, with sin, you know, Satan tries to have you think, oh no, God doesn't want you to come close to him. You might want to stay away you know, and, and he wants to distance you from the Lord. But the Lord's grace is that he's always leaning towards you. He's always wanting to be close to you no matter what. And so it says for us to be sober and hope. So so be sober and and try to be clear headed and calm and hope. So trust. Trust fully with you know, hoping and trusting completely without wavering for the grace, the favor that Jesus has on you that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because what he started in all of us, he's going to complete. That's what the word says. And, you know, he, he doesn't start something that he doesn't finish. He's going to finish in us what he started because he's the author and he's the finisher of our faith. He, he's going to finish us, the faith that he's embirthed with us. And so, you know, don't don't lose heart because it says that this grace, you know, of his favor is going to be brought to completion. It's going to be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revealing of him when he comes. The revelation means apocalypto is what it is. See, apocalypsis. But it comes from the apocalypse. That's what apocalypse means is, is the revealing of Jesus Christ. You know, the revelation of Jesus Christ means the unveiling. It's principally used as the revelation of Jesus Christ, the word, the revealing of the word, especially a particular spiritual manifestation of Christ and his will previously unknown to the extent because it's been veiled and covered. But this is talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ is the revealing of him from heaven. So we're in first Peter one. And so going down to where um, it's used in first Peter one 13 right here. Um, if you scroll up a little bit, it's talking about in this sense um, used of events by, by which things or states or persons hitherto are withdrawn from view and are made visible to all. So where Jesus is made visible to all, the revealing of Jesus Christ, the manifestation, the appearance. And it says, the event in which God will appear, uh, who and what the sons of God are, you know, because everybody is going to see us as Jesus sees us once we leave this earth, by the glory received from God at the last day. It says um, right here, of the glory clothed with which he will return from heaven, of his return itself, you know, when he comes back to get his bride. So the grace will be revealed, or the, the grace will be brought unto us. We're, we're supposed to hope, trust, and to the very end, without wavering, the grace, the favor that is to be brought unto you at the return and manifestation of Jesus Christ. So as obedient children, as obedient children, obedience is submissive and compliance. It says obedience is submission to what is heard. So obedience comes with hearing. You know, it says, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have to be 
um, not just hearers of the word, but also doers of the word, you know? So, because that's what obedience is, is it says obedience as the response to someone speaking. This refers to an earthly voice or the Lord's voice. You know, Jesus is the word. So he speaks through his word. And so being obedient to God's word, it says, <laughs> there was a song that says, obedience to God's word is the safest foundation. And that's so true. Obedience to God's word is the safest foundation for us to be on. Um, obedience, compliance, submission, you know, to obey. And then, so obedience means to hearken, you know, to listen. And when you go to the root of it, this is pretty cool. It says to listen, to attend to, to obey, and to answer. See, to, to properly to obey what is heard, literally under hearing. It's, it's acting under the authority of the one speaking, really listening to the one giving the charge or the order. To hearken, obey, suggests actively listening and being fully compliant and responsive. But it, it involves submissiveness, to be submissive to what we know is the truth and what, what God through the Holy Spirit in us is is urging us to do or to not do you know so fashioning ourselves as obedient children oh sorry fashioning ourselves as obedient children right but not fashioning ourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance so not fashioning yourselves that word fashioning yourselves means to not conform to not conform to the former lusts of your ignorance. So the, the past lusts before you got the Holy Spirit, don't obey those things. Obey the Word of God. Obey the Holy Spirit within you and be submissive to it. See, it says, having an outward shape, assuming a similar outward form or expression by following the same pattern. Don't follow the same pattern that you constantly did um, before you got the Holy Spirit. Turn from those things and... See, it says, according to the former lusts in your ignorance, you know, our former lusts, the past lusts, the desires, the passionate longing. Um, it says properly passion built on strong feelings and urges. And th in this sense, it's, it's desire that's not inspired by faith. And So the former less in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. So so he that is called you is holy, and you know, this is what the, the video is about, a call to be holy. But what does holy mean? See, he who has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. So it says here, what is holy? And this is that word, hagios. And it says, set apart by or for God. So holy means to be set apart. Set apart from what? Set apart from the world, you know, so that we could be, you know, more like our Lord Jesus Christ every day. See, it says holy for the believer means likeness of the nature with the Lord likeness of nature with the Lord because different from the world. So we have to be set apart from this world, totally different. Um, you know, it says a, a friend of this world is an enemy of God is where it says, I think that's how it says it. A friend of this world is an enemy of God. So, you know, we're, we're to, to hate this world and the things of it, you know, and not be comfortable in this world and, you know, watching uh, murder on TV, you know, like, like video and not well videos too, but I'm saying like movies and, you know, that should make you sick of, of wanting to see that stuff. You know, you shouldn't want to see it. And, um, you know, because we should be different from the world, the Holy Spirit within us, it says the core meaning of Hagios is different. So thus a temple, so now think about the, the temple, um, the second temple that got broken down in, in, uh, in Jerusalem a long time ago. It says the temple in the first century was Hagios. It was a holy temple of God because it was different from all the other buildings on the earth. 
And so just like us, you know, we have to be different than the whole world. And that's what makes us holy. And see, holy has the technical meaning different from the world because like the Lord. And so different, set apart, distinguished, distinct, other, because special to the Lord. So the only way that we can be blameless and and sinless is by putting the blameless, sinless blood of Christ upon us and putting our faith in that, that it cleanses us. Because, you know, if you go one day, two days, three days without doing any, anything wrong that you don't really have to repent for, and, you know, then you start saying, oh, yeah, you know, I've done really well. And, you know, but then all of a sudden you stumble and you have to put your faith in Jesus's blood, which is holy, so that so that it can cleanse you. And but what is what does it mean to be holy? It means to be set apart from this world, different from the world, because like the Lord. And so the more separate you are from this world, the more like the Lord you will be. And and so it, that's what it means to be holy. You know, the Holy Spirit within you sanctifies you and it it, it says that the Lord will take you from glory to glory. Um but when the word says, you know, it says in, in Revelation that, that all the angels will say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. See, God is so holy because he's so unlike anything else. He's so unlike the things of this world. He's so separate and set apart from the things of this world. And he's so separate and set apart from even anything in heaven. He's holy, holy, holy. And so that's what we're going to be um, saying for eternity, saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. And so... So that's what holy means, different and distinct from from the things of this world. Um, but it says, so be ye holy, set apart, unlike the world, in all manner of conversation. It doesn't mean just with our speech. It means our behavior, our conduct with, with other men, our behavior and our manner of life. So it, it says literally uh, down to up. And if anybody watches Jonathan on here, you know what I'm talking about, is we're to be turned the opposite way. Um, it literally means to be, so be holy in all conversation means to be ho be set apart with all of our behavior. So, so creating an upturning, a change of outward behavior from an upturn of inner beliefs. So, so being turned up is what it what it means by being separate set apart from this world in all manner of conversation because it's written be ye holy be ye set apart from this world because i am set apart from this world and so i pray that blesses you all this was just a quick uh bible study i don't know how quick it was is <laughs> still a half hour video but if this blessed you all glory, honor, power, and praise to the Most High God. I don't take credit for any wisdom or knowledge that he's given me because everything I have right now, I didn't have before I had the Holy Spirit. So thank you, Jesus. And, you know, so when it says, without holiness, no man will see the Lord, without being set apart from this world and, and different from this world, no man will see the Lord. So God bless you all. God bless your families. God bless your children. God bless your homes. You know, we're, we're praying for, for everybody on my, on my channel, all my subscribers, um, everybody that, that is for us. And, um, even those that aren't for us, we're praying for, but I just want you all to know we're praying for you, your children, your spouses, your families, your homes, all the people that you're worried about being saved, we pray for them. And we love you all so much. And Lord willing, we'll talk soon. Okay, peace.